Bill Panoff here. We are uh, here in Seattle, Washington. This is a very special day. We are here at Pier 91, and we are about to board the new Amsterdam. This is the first cruise ship that I will be boarding in over 15 months. I am so excited to reunite with the passengers, but more importantly, to reunite with the crew. It's a very emotional day for me to be out there to rekindle the spirit of cruising once again. And what better way to do it than on Holland America? The ship will be sailing through many Alaskan ports. Uh, we'll be experiencing all the activities in the ports and the beautiful service and all the activities that Holland America has to offer. We just cleared security and the embarkation process and we're here on the quayside just about to board this beauty called the New Amsterdam. Look at her, she is magnificent. Only moments away from stepping foot again on a cruise ship after all these months and even more excited that you're coming along with us. It's a glorious day here in New Amsterdam, and this is our first sea day, and Holland America has so many activities planned for us, but there's one activity that I can never miss every morning, and that is going to the gym. One of the most important aspects of your cruise experience is exploring the ports of call. And what better way to explore the ports than with shore excursions offered by the cruise line? And I'm here with our good friend, the shore excursion manager on board the New Amsterdam, Maya. Maya, how are you? Great, and how are you? Very, very good. It's nice to be here with you. Nice to be cruising in Alaska. Well, thank you, and welcome on board. Thank you. Tell me a little bit about your experience. How did you wind up on a cruise ship working for Holland America as a shore excursion manager? Well, it was a long journey. It started originally with another cruise line as a lifeguard, which led me a little bit further to the Holland America cruise line 10 years ago. It's exciting. You know, some of these ports that we're going to are uh, amazing ports of call to experience Alaska. What are the favorite shore excursions that you would suggest uh, for our viewers if they're coming to Alaska? Well, definitely, for instance, if you're going to Juneau, you have to experience the glaciers and the whale watching. So if you're going to Ketchikan, it's more about a native culture. And of course, our very famous lumberjack show, that's fast and furious of Alaska that we call them. Um, if you're going to Skagway, it's all about the White Pass train and a well, little bit of a glaciers. Icy Strait Point that we're going to visit this cruise, sure, sure. it is about the whale watching and the bears. Very popular this time of the year when the salmon starts to run, bears are everywhere. It's a pleasure meeting you, Maya, and we're very excited about exploring all the wonderful tours that Holland America has to offer in Alaska. Good morning, everyone. We're only two hours away from the capital of the 49th state of Alaska, Juneau. Look at this scenery. It's absolutely breathtaking. We had the privilege of being invited on the bridge of the New Amsterdam. Uh, Captain Yeroen was very generous to allow us up here. And the vantage point from up here to see the town of uh, Juneau as we arrive in port, we're about 10 minutes away from docking. The guests are super excited to go ashore to experience the shore excursions, shopping, and everything Alaska has to offer. Pulling into Juneau, one can't help but stand in awe of the backdrop. Breathtaking mountain views capped with icy tops and speckled with trails of waterfalls. We just got off the ship here in Juneau and we're going ashore and all the guests are going ashore. It's a lot of excitement in the air and from here we're going to the Mount Roberts Tramway which will take us up to the side of the mountain with an amazing view of downtown Juneau. Come along. 
Only a few minute walk from your cruise ship is the downtown shopping area of Juneau. And it's full of unique stores that are indigenous to the area. Jewelry stores, hand carvings, anything you could find is right here. It's a short walk from your ship and the scenery is just beautiful. You have the mountains behind you, the Mount Robert Tramway and the cruise ships. Eighteen hundred feet up the side of Mount Roberts Mountain. This is going to be amazing, all the way up to the top. The Gold Belt Tram began service in 1996 and is one of the most vertical tramways in the world, ascending to elevations over 1,800 feet above sea level. The tram brings you to Mountain House on top of Mount Roberts, where the main attraction is, of course, hiking. There is hiking for every level and a plethora of trails to choose from, all boosting panoramic mountain views, with some leading to incredible views of glaciers. One thing to be certain of is that hiking atop of a mountain will earn you an appetite, and Juno has some great local seafood. in Juneau, you know, most guests want to go shopping or take a tour, but there's one place in particular that is not to be missed, and it's been here for many, many years and is really an institution. It's Tracy's Crab Shack, and I have the honor of having the owner and the founder next to me. Tracy, how are you? I'm great. Thank you. It's nice to see people again. <laughs> it's nice nice to see you. Nice to be back to Alaska with the restart of cruising. We have not only one, but we have two ships in today. I know. That's exciting. People love your crab. I mean, I'm on board a Holland America ship, and during dinner, people or just chatting, are you going to Tracy's or going to Tracy's? Tell me a little bit about how you got started in this business. How did you wind up in Alaska? I wound up in Alaska, I was talking to a friend and they said, oh, come up for six months and work. That was 28 years ago. And I came up and used to go crabbing all the time. I loved it so much, I just thought it was the neatest thing to pull up these pots and see these creatures. So it was a joke that um, I should just start selling crab legs one leg at a time. People would love to try it and love to experience it. After 10 years after the idea, I finally started it and we're on 16 years now. So there are different types of crabs that you offer here. You have the tanner crab and dungeon crab. Tell me a little bit about the different variety and what do we have in front of us? And more importantly, how do you attack them? How do you eat them? Yes. Well, this is Red King Crab. This is all from Bristol Bay, Bering Sea, from the deadliest catch boats, mostly. And um, there's three different kinds of king crab. We have blue, brown, and red. The red is less spiny. It's the most sought after, so that's the one we go with. Uh -huh. But we make it a little bit easy for you. So let me show you how to do it. Sure, yeah, show us how to attack it. And so you want to break it against the leg. We break all these little joints. It makes it a lot easier. Uh-huh, okay. We do make it easy for you, so we do slice it down the side. Right. And then I've got my handy little crab tool, and you use this just like scissors. You don't need it, but if you use it like scissors. Oh, you just cut it open. Just slice it open. Cut it open. You're like a surgeon. I know. And then you just pull out all the meat inside. Wow. Do you mind if I try a little taste? Mmm. Oh, wow. <laughs> You haven't lived till you come to Tracy's Crab Shack. This is so good. Really, thank so you, good. We just arrived in Glacier Bay, and the captain has opened up the bow area of the ship. People are around taking photographs of this beautiful, beautiful scenery. The weather is cooperating. It's a sunny day. Glacier Bay is absolutely spectacular. And I'm here with the man that actually holds it all together, the general manager of the new Amsterdam, Bart. How are you, Bart? I'm fantastic. Beautiful weather. We're glad to be back in Alaska again. It's nice to, nice to see you. Do you ever get tired of the scenery? Oh, no. I've been doing this for almost 20 years, wow. and this is never get tired. Wow. Just the nature, the wildlife, the glaciers itself. It's one of the highlights of our Alaska cruise. So to have your office, uh, you know, be in an area where you like look out the window and, and there's Glacier Bay, I mean, it's phenomenal. It's fantastic. Yeah, we sail all over the world, uh, a lot of different ports, a lot of different continents. Uh, so, but Alaska is still one of the most beautiful places in the world to visit. But this seems to be a highlight. 
Yes, absolutely. Glacier Bay is normally the highlight of the cruise. We have a lot of beautiful ports uh, that we visit to, a lot of shore excursions. Uh, but this is the place to go uh, by cruise ship, visiting the glaciers up and close. So every week you get to meet your 1,400 to maybe 1,800 different guests. Every single week you get to touch all these different people from all over the world. Yeah, it's an amazing. We get people from all over the world, a lot of different cultures, a lot of different places that we go. It's a very dynamic job and I love it. And you get to meet these people over and over again because I understand Holland has one of the highest repeat factors in the industry of guests that return over and over again because they love the brand so much. Yeah, we actually have five uh, what we call present club members. So to become a present club member, you need to be 1,400 days on the wow. cruise ship. Wow. Our higher mariners at the moment has over 2,000 days on the cruise ship. Oh my goodness. Think about it. How many years is that? Wow. 2,000 days on a cruise. Well, listen, I, I, I would start today. I love uh, Holland America and I don't want to get off. I mean, is there any chance that I could stay on for at least a year? Yeah, you do dishes or you can cook <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> dishes I don't do. I cook. Not, not so good. All right. We'll find you a job. Bart, thank you so much. It's a pleasure chatting with you and continued success with Holland America. Thank you so much, Bill. Thank nice you. to meet you again. Too. Welcome to Icy Strait Points. This is the true wilderness. This is one of the itineraries on our cruise, and this place is absolutely beautiful. Icy Strait Point was designed to keep the integrity of Alaskan wildlife as much as possible, with local excursions built to emphasize the incredible nature that surrounds. It is home to the world's largest zip rider, dropping adventures over 1,300 feet, from whale watching, hiking, zip lining, to bear watching, there are both adventure activities and leisure activities, and they are all centered around the common theme of experiencing a true and natural Alaska. One of the favorite tours among cruise guests is bear watching. Tell us a little bit about this tour we're on. Apparently, uh, there's a good opportunity for us to see bears. Yeah, absolutely. This tour is called the Spasky Bear Search, and we're just descending down on a beautiful trail through the temperate rainforest to Spasky River. This is the platform where apparently the, we'll see the bears, hopefully. Absolutely. Can Let's guarantee check it out. That, uh, and I think I see one right over there. Oh, wow. Look right in the river. Wow. This island has the largest population per square mile of brown coastal bears uh, in the entire world. And as you can tell, they're very large and they're the second largest bear in the world. They're the same species as grizzlies, but they get bigger and they're coastal brown bears. Can't get much better than this when it comes to wildlife. This is, this is nature at its finest. This is the first time I've seen a bear in its natural habitat. It is exhilarating, bear watching, beautiful. We're on the bridge of the New Amsterdam and we've been on board here for about uh, an hour or so watching the maneuvering of the ship arriving in Ketchikan. It's uh, quite a, a feat to bring this ship in alongside the dock and no one does it better than the captain on board, Captain Jeroen, all the way from Holland. How are you, Captain? I'm doing very well, Bill. Uh, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to, uh, to be invited on the bridge and to watch the operation. Uh, there's quite a lot of, uh, it's like a puzzle putting it all together to get the ship alongside. That's correct, yeah, and it's a whole uh, team effort. We're here with, as you saw, we are here with a whole team. We're all supporting each other, and that is, of course, also to catch if there's any mistake made or anything missed, then, uh, then they speak up and they tell us uh, what it is. So it's a team effort that we do, together with the pilots. Captain, how has cruising changed over the years from the time you stepped foot on a cruise ship to today? Well, as, you, as everybody knows, ships have gotten bigger. We look at the ships uh, that I started on, they're uh, half the size or even a third the size of what we have now, so the capacity has increased, but also it has become uh, more demanding from the guests but also we have been supplying a lot more. Like what you said, we have a lot more different uh, dining venues, there's a lot more different entertainment, uh, enrichment programs. But one thing remains the same is that interaction with the crew on board, the interaction with the waiter, the interaction with your, your room steward. I mean, that, that human touch is always there. And that's a big part of the cruise, the memories that people make with the crew members on board. 
Correct. It's, uh, and it's one of our strong points actually with Holland America Line is indeed that interaction with the crew. We see it with cruises when people come back, they really feel like they're coming home. The guests on board really make long time friends with the crew. I wonder if they even like beyond the cruise probably stay in touch with them. There is, yeah, even um, especially now after this whole pause, that during the pause there was indeed uh, guests that stayed in touch with team members via yeah, the now, of course, social media, and everybody can stay in touch a lot easier than it was before. So that does happen indeed. Captain, of all the itineraries that you've sailed on all the many ships, is there one in particular that sticks out as being your favorite? Uh, yes, I think the most memorable is uh, the one that I uh, sailed in Antarctica. At the time I wasn't the captain yet, I was the second in command, but it was just amazing to go there. It, it made such a deep impact. And when you sailed around there, you felt really, this is yeah, just about the end of the world. This, this is untouched by humans yet, uh, when you sail around there. So it was beautiful to see that. Captain, your own pleasure being here, and uh, thank you so much for a wonderful cruise on Holland America, and uh, continued success. Thank you, thank you very much. It was a thank pleasure you. having you on board and thank meeting you. Very you. Much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Captain. Thank you. We just arrived in Ketchikan, the salmon capital of the world. Come with me and let me show you some of the sights of this beautiful city. One of the highlights of Ketchikan, Alaska is a shore excursion called the Great Alaskan Lumberjack Show. This show is a favorite among all cruise passengers. It packs up every, every time a ship is in, and we're here today to witness it live in person. And we're here with Boone, one of the lead lumberjacks. How's How it going? You? Good, how are you doing today? Good. How does one become a lumberjack at this show? Well, you know, we get a lot of our athletes uh, from colleges, from collegiate timber sports teams. Uh, so colleges have now produced big teams that travel around and compete versus each other in okay. timber sports. Some of us were also born into it. So my family got started in timber sports. I got started log rolling when I was about three years old and kind of progressed through the sport. I uh, started the rest of it when I was about 16. So would I have it? what it takes to be a lumberjack? I mean, looking at my physique right now, and be, be honest. Absolutely, you know, timber sports is kind of one of those sports that once you learn it, it's really easy on the body. And we have competitors all the way up into their 80s still competing at the world championship level. Can you teach me a few things with the axe or some axe throwing or something like you that? You can definitely throw some axes if you want to come on over here to sure. our arena and we can do that. Let's do it. All right, come on over. All right, so what we're going to be doing today is throwing some axes right here at our target. If you've never thrown an axe, we're going to be putting our non-dominant hand on the bottom. Okay. So I'm right-handed, left, left hand on the bottom of the axe, yep. right hand on top. I like to point my thumbs gotcha. straight up the axe, gives you a little bit more momentum, okay. uh, control over the axe. Your feet really don't matter, so you're just going to kind of stand flat-footed. Uh, and just kind of cast the target, or cast the axe right over your head, right at the target. Wow. All right, so it's as easy as that. You ready for your shot? I'm ready. All right, I'm ready. here you go, my friend. Okay. Come on. on. Dominant hand here? Yep. Dominant hand here? That's right, and you're gonna step right on over here to 18 feet away. And I gotta make sure when I go back, I don't hit myself. That's right. <laughs> I've taken my lesson. Boone taught me well. Watch this bullseye, on the count of three. One, two, Three. Hey! Oh, wow, bullseye! Look at that, right in the center. Whoa! Oh, wild man, Jake Lynn! So, Dawson, please give it up for your first man, Coach Leggy, Matt Squires. The southernmost entrance to Alaska's famed Inside Passage sits a town known for its feisty salmon, idyllic scenery, and incredibly rich Alaskan native culture. Yes, that is how Ketchikan describes itself, and the description is right on point. Every angle is picturesque, but this port town is also home to rich history and culture, being well known for the many totem poles throughout the city and along hiking trails.
You know, Holland America and the brand is known for so many things, but one element that keeps bringing guests back over and over again is the food, the delectable food on Holland America under the direction of Master Chef Rudy Soderman. And on board the new Amsterdam, the orchestra leader is Chef Owen. Chef, how are you? I'm doing great, thank you, and it's good to have you here. It's nice to be here, and it's amazing to experience all the food and all the alternative restaurants, the main dining room, the Lido. It's been absolutely wonderful. Well, we do the crab cakes with the sweet chili mayo and mustard, and uh, the salmon goes with, with a lemon splash served on wild rice with spinach, and it's, it's an experience, and guests, guests simply love the fresh salmon and everything that we have to offer here. Tell us about the dessert you were pairing earlier with the strawberries. Well, we have a strawberry uh, pavlova. Basically, it's a pavlova with strawberry and a strawberry consomme with basil. And yeah, that's one of the favorites. I mean, almost every lunch we go through about 40 out of, out of like 60 guests. Well, and then it was a dish with, with shrimp that you were uh, strategically placing, uh, you know. Absolutely, the, the bruschetta, the grilled, grilled prawn bruschetta, that it goes with the, prim, so the primavera salsa and the balsamic glaze on top. That is also one of the favorites. I would say like 20% of the guests every day kind of order that. So you come on a ship for Highland America and you actually lose weight, in other words, when you leave. Is that right? I lose weight, you gain. <laughs> Believe me, I've gained about 10 pounds, but it's been worth every moment of it. Uh, Highland America is known for the food, the restaurants on board, the level of detail, the selection of food, the quality of food. You cannot go wrong on Highland America with Chef Owen uh, directing all the lovely people who are involved. It has been an exciting cruise aboard the New Amsterdam, and it went by much too fast. It was particularly special to me to sail after the cruise industry has been dormant for so long and to sail aboard Holland America Line. One thing I must say is that the spirit and the kindness of the crew and the interaction with the guests, along with the variety of entertainment, activities, amazing culinary venues, coupled with unforgettable ports of call, was the perfect recipe for a cruise vacation that I will never forget. Until next episode, I'm Bill Panoff.